on the morning of Christ's Nativity by John Milton. This is the month and this the happy morn wherein the Son of Heaven's eternal King of wedded maid and virgin mother born or great redemption from above did bring. For so the holy sages once did sing that he our deadly forfeit should release and with his father work us a perpetual pace. That glorious form, that light unsufferable, and that far beaming blaze of majesty wherewith he wont at heaven's high council table to sit the midst of trinal unity, he led aside and here with us to be, forsook the courts of everlasting day, and chose with us a darksome house of mortal clay. Say, heavenly muse, shall not thy sacred van afford a present to the infant god, as though no verse, no hymn, or solemn strain to welcome him to this his new abode? No while the heaven, by the sun's tame untrod, hath took no print of the approaching light, and all the spangled hosts keep watch in squadrons bright. See how from far upon the eastern road the starlit wizard's haste with odours sweet. O oh, run, prevent them with thy humble ode, and lay it lowly at his blessed feet. Have thou the honour first thy lord to greet, and join thy voice unto the angel choir, from out his sacred altar touched with hallowed fire. It was the winter wild, while the heaven-born child all mainly wrapped in the rude manger lies. Nature, in awe to him, had doffed her gaudy trim, with her great master so to sympathize. It was no season then for her, to wanton with the sun, her lusty paramour. Only with speeches fair she woos the gentle air, to hide her guilty front with innocent snow and on her naked shame pollute with sinful blame the saintly veil of mad and white to throw, confounded that her maker's eyes should look so near upon her foul deformities. But he her fears to say sent down the meek-eyed pace. She crowned with olive green came softly sliding down through the turning sphere his ready harbinger, with turtle wing the amorous clouds dividing. And waving wide her myrtle wand, she strikes a universal pace through sea and land. No war or battle sound was heard the world around. The idle spear and shield were high uphung. The hooked chariot stood, unstained with hostile blood. The trumpet spake not to the armed throng. And kings sat still with awful eye as if their Cyrillic knew their sovereign lord was by. But peaceful was the night wherein the Prince of Light his reign of pace upon the earth began, with wines with wonder whist, smoothly the waters kissed, whispering new joys to the mild ocean, who now hath quite forgot to rave, while birds of calm sit brooding on the charmed web. The stars with deep amaze stand fixed in steadfast gaze, bending own way their precious influence, and will not take their flight for all the morning light or Lucifer that often warned them thence. But in their glimmering orbs did glow, until their Lord himself bespake and bid them go. And though the shady gloom had given dare her room, the sun himself withheld his wonted speed, and hid his head for sham as his inferior flame the new enlightened world no more should need. He saw a greater sun appear than his bright throne or burning axle tree could bear. The shepherds on the lawn, or ere the point of dawn, sat simply chatting in a rustic row. For little thought there than that the mighty Pan was kindly come to live with them below. Perhaps their loves, or else their sheep, was all that did their silly thoughts so busy keep. When such music sweet their hearts and ears did greet, as never was be mortal finger struck, divinely warbled voice, answering the stringed noise, as all their souls in blissful rapture took. There, such pleasure loath to lose, 
A thousand echoes still prolongs each heavenly close. Nether that heard such sound beneath the hollow round of Cynthia said, there a rage and thrilling, now was almost one to think her part was done, and that her reign had here its last fulfilling. She knew such harmony alone could hold all heaven and earth in happier union. At last surrounds their sight a globe of circular light that with long beams the sham fast night arrayed. The helmed cherubim and swarded seraphim are seen in glittering ranks with wings displayed, harping in loud and solemn choir, with unexpressive notes to heaven's newborn air. Such music as tis said before was never made, but when of all the sons of morning sung, while the Creator great his constellation set, and the well-balanced world on hinges hung, and cast the dark foundations deep, and bid the weltering waves their oozy channel keep. Ring out ye crystal spares, once bless our human airs, if ye have power to touch our senses so, and let your silver chime move in melodious time, and let the bass of heaven's deep organ blow, and with your ninefold harmony, Make up full consort to the angelic symphony. For if such holy song and rap or fancy long, time will run back and fetch the edge of gold, and speckled vanity will sicken soon and die, and leprous sin will melt from earthly mould, and hell itself will pass away, and leave her dolorous mansions to the peer in day. Yet truth and justice then will down return to men orbed in a rainbow, and like glory's wearing, mercy will sit between throned in celestial sheen, with radiant feet the tissued clouds down staring, and heaven, as at some festival, will open wide the gates of her high palace hall. But wisest fad says no, this must not yet be so. The bab lies yet in smiling infancy, that on the bitter cross must redeem our loss, so both himself and us to glorify. Yet first to those it shand in sleep, the wakeful trump of doom must thunder through the deep, with such a horrid clang as on Mount Sinai rang, while the red fire and smouldering clouds out break. The aged earth aghast with terror of that blast shall from the surface to the center shake when at the world's last session the dreadful judge in middle air shall spread his throne. And then at last our bliss full and perfect is, but no begins for from this happy day. Though dragon underground in strata limits bound, not half so far cast his usurped swear, and wroth to see his kingdom fail, swinges the scaly horror of his folded tail. The oracles are dumb, no vice or hideous hum runs through the arched roof in words deceiving. Apollo from his shrine can no more divine with hollow shriek the steep of Delphos laving. No nightly trance or breathed spell inspires the pale-eyed priest from the prophetic cell. The lonely mountains o'er, and the resounding shore, a voice of weeping heard and loud lament, from haunted spring and dell, edged with poplar pale, the part ingenious is with sighing scent, with flowering woven dresses torn, the nymphs in twilight shed of tangled thickets mourn. In consecrated earth, and on the holy hearth, the Lars and Lemurs mourn with midnight plant, in urns and altars around, a drear and dying sound affrights the flamens at their service quaint. The chill marble seems to sweat, while each peculiar power forgoes his wanted set. Pure and balim forsake their temples dim with that twice battered god of Palestine, and mooned Ashtaroth, heaven's queen and mother both, now sits not girt with taper's holy shine. The Libic Haman shrinks his horn, in vain the Tyrian meds their wounded Thamuz mourn. 
and sullen Moloch fled, hath left in shadows dread his burning idol all of blackest hue. In vain with symbols ring, there called the grisly king in dismal dance about the furnace blue. The brutish gods of Nailers fast, Isis and Horus and the dog Anubis hast. Nor is Osiris seen in Memphian grove or green, trampling the unshowered grass with lowings load. Nor can he be at rest within his sacred chest. Naught but profoundest hell can be his shroud. In vain with timbrelled anthems dark, the sable stolid sorcerers bear his worship dark. He feels from Judah's land the dreaded infant's hand, the rays of Bethlehem blind his dusky eyne. Nor all the gods beside longer dare abide, not Typhon huge ending in snaky twine. Our Bab to show his godhead through, can in his swaddling bands control the damned crew. So when the sun in bed curtained with cloudy red pillows his chin upon an orient wave, the flocking shadows pale through to the infernal jail, each fettered ghost slips to his several grave. And the yellow skirted fares fly after the night steeds, laving their moon loved mares. But see, the virgin blessed hath led her babe to rest. Time is our tedious song should here have ending. Heaven's youngest teamed star hath fixed her polished car, her sleeping lord with handmaid lamp attending. And all about the courtly stable, Bright harnessed angels sit in order serviceable. If you liked this video and want to help me make more things like it, consider making a pledge at my Patreon account.